Hello. So I thought I'd record a video today on kind of what my expectations were when I got Schroeder gliders, how it's changed between then and now, and if I was ever afraid of that I maybe bit off more than I could chew or that my goals for having Schroeder gliders were never going to be met. Um, it's kind of a little bit more of a general topic. We'll kind of see where it goes. I got a really great question that this video is kind of answering um, in one of the comments. So thank you very much for submitting your comments and video suggestions. I'm going to do my very best to accommodate those. I can't promise that I will respond as immediately as I am to this one. This one just came in 12 hours ago and I thought, you know what, I'm going to respond to that. One of the lady that commented basically said that she'd had sugar, or she's had exotic pets and she has all the stuff for sugar letters, but she's just a little bit afraid to kind of pull the trigger and get them because of some of the things that she's read or researched and experiences she's had in the past with other pets. Um, and she's a little bit afraid, for lack of a better word, that she might end up getting these gremlins or that they might end up being as hard to take care of as monkeys. And I get the concern. I really honestly do. And I think it's probably smarter. She's probably being smarter about it than I even was at the beginning when I got mine. I was a little bit naive. Uh, I wasn't naive in that I had done a lot of research. I knew how to care for them. I knew that I could give them a, a good life and I could give them a safe environment and I could feed them the right things. I'd done all of my research on that. The interacting with them part is what I was missing. And I also wasn't sure if, I, I kind of, well, my goals at the very beginning for when I got them to, and where they are now are probably different. So. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but first I thought I'd go get them out of the cage and show you guys my, um, I'm not going to do like a full cage setup video right now, but this is, so right here is my sugar glider closet, and that's where I keep all the toys and vines, and the um, stuff I put in the bottom of the cage is right there to help it not smell so bad, and that's a godsend. And then this right here is my cage wheel, most important toy two water sources boom and boom um they of course are sleeping on the highest possible area it's not even a sleeping bag it's a tunnel that i put and they love sleeping up high um but it makes it harder so i have to climb up on my chair to get them because i have my cage in a built-in um bookshelf so which let me tell you was not easy to find a cage that fit the right dimensions to fit in this bookshelf. That was like a miracle from Jesus as well. So let me go grab them and then I will talk to you about kind of what my fears were, um, some of my experiences, and we'll start that conversation. I'm sure I won't answer all the questions in this one video, but at least we can get started. Okay, let me go get them. We'll see if they crab at me. That would not be unheard of. This one's a little bit trickier to get them out of because it has two openings. <laughs> it's a tunnel, not a, a bag, but that's okay. Oh, hello, YouTube. <laughs> She's like, oh man, I'm gonna go back to sleep. So when they settle in here, what I end up doing is just blocking one of the exits. And then I do the same thing to get them out of here that I would to get them out of any bonding bag. So now I've basically just made it a bonding bag. So I'm just going to go ahead and get her out while we're talking. And then the other two are in here. Say hi. Hello, babies. I'm going to put them in my lap for now. So I love having them in the videos, but they are a bit of a distraction for me because... Anyway, because they're so cute, how could you not be distracted? Hi, 
go. Okay, so when I started researching sugar gliders, I kind of thought that I was going to get I was going to get to the point with them where they were maybe closer to the idea of a dog, like where they would snuggle with you like a dog, like they would just fall asleep on your lap. And they do snuggle with you, but they are nocturnal and they don't like the light. So <clears throat> They snuggle with you, but they want to snuggle in, in your shirt or covered up in something. So you can't really like look at them as much as I love to <laughs> when they're when they're truly sleeping. So she's trying to go back in there. I don't want her to. I want her to stay out with me. So I'm kind of guiding the, com the um, I don't know why I would say conversation, the interaction between us here. See how I'm actually using like the back of my hand though? I'm not using the palm of my hand. Um, so yeah, I thought that, I don't know what I thought. I thought they were really, really cute. And I, um, kind of maybe underestimated the nocturnal aspect. I under, underestimated how much that would affect our interactions. And, um, I've gotten used to it now and I, I don't mind it at all. Um, but I think a big part of it is just figuring out what you're what you're hoping that that your relationship with them is going to be like in the long run. If you're hoping that you're going to have um, animals that snuggle with you, or if you're hoping that you have um, animals that will jump to you and glide, like all the cool videos that you see. I'm going to put my no so bronding bronding bonding bag down my shirt so that she can go in there. Um, I have a tutorial on how to make that if you're interested. This is really nice because I'm going to be leaving here pretty soon to go to my kids school and I can just take them, I can just take the whole bag out and put it in a zippered bonding pouch and then that way when I get home I can just put them right down my shirt and we don't have to, it just makes it easy. So. Let's see if she wants to go in there. Yeah. And she does. So, so basically my goals with them have changed a little bit. I was a little all over the place when I first got them. I thought, so when I very first got them, I gave them some, some time just to hang out in their cage, uh, which is really, really hard for me to do because I just wanted to like love them and squeeze them. But they also intimidated me quite nicely because they uh their crabbing noise is real scary and when they lunge it's real scary and they have really sharp teeth and so there was a moment when we got them home and i put them in their cage and they were one of them was crabbing at me and scared the poop out of me and i was like oh my goodness what have i done they're really cute but uh, now what do i do i was totally intimidated and so I let them just kind of chill for a little while. And then it took me a little bit to even figure out, okay, so how do I get them in the bonding bag? Hey, don't bite me. How do I get them in the bonding bag? Um, say hi to Belky. Hi, Belky. Hey, bud. Um, and then I, so I figured that out. Um, basically, I just took the, the um, sleeping pouch and I put had the bonding bag and then I just kind of like squeezed and got them to go in there and then I hurried up and zipped it closed. Um, so that was the first step was just getting them in the bonding bag and spending time with them. I just carried them around everywhere with me basically and um, took them on walks with me. I mean, er when I got them, it was warm out, so I basically carried them everywhere. And then after that, I got a I got a mosquito net tent, and we spent tent time in there a few times a week, a couple hours a day. Just let them climb all over, let them jump on you, let them get used to you. That was good. Um, I don't use a tent anymore because my goals for how I want to interact with them have changed. 
Um, what I found was that they would have fun for a little bit, but then for the most part, they just wanted to snuggle and go back to sleep. And it's kind of a bit of a mess because then you're, they're pooping and peeing while you're in there with them. And then, so it's a cleanup, it's an effort afterwards. Um, so, and then basically what I realized is it was training them to jump off of me because they, that's when they get, when they're on me, then they're in the tent and they jump off of me. Um, they can climb on me wherever they want. And what I realized is that wasn't the interactions I wanted to have with them. What I wanted to have was I wanted them to stay where I could see them on my shoulder, on my chest, or in my shirt. That's what I wanted. So, but then it was difficult for me to figure out how to get them to be bra babies because they would go in my bra and then um, they would come right back out and go right back in and come right back out. And I couldn't get them to be content to stay there. And that's really where the bra bonding pouch came um, into existence because um, I would spend like 45 minutes getting them settled and being happy in there. And then I'd have to leave to go do something. And then I was going to be right back, but I didn't want to leave. I couldn't go with them. I mean, some people do, but most of the time where I was going, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. And so, especially because they were kind of in and out, in and out, I wasn't confident that they would stay in when I would go out. So, um, so then my next goal then became, okay, I want to get them to be comfortable on me. I want them to be comfortable in my bra or in a pouch, just close to my heart. They're marsupials, so they enjoy being close to your heart and close to your smells. Um, it's just a, it's just you know, even though they're sleeping, they're bonding with you. Um, they're interacting with you. They're hearing your voice, especially when I do like videos and stuff like this. They're hearing my voice. They're and then I'm I'm moving around. They're learning to trust that um, even if I'm not perfectly still and I'm moving, that they're safe. It's just like a baby step process. But before I decided that I wanted them to be, or before I knew that I could get them to be bra babies. And before I knew that I could get them to stay on me, I had probably a six month or a year long period where I basically, I would interact with them. You know, I would give them treats through the cage. I would talk to them, I would watch them. And I would sometimes put them in the um, bonding bag for that kind of time, but not consistently. I basically just, they were just caged animals and they were fine. There was nothing and there was nothing wrong with that and our bond didn't go like super away it's not like they became vicious or anything like that um but it didn't get to the next level either and so that's why i really as soon as i made this and i realized oh my gosh this is helping i thought i got to show this to other people and and maybe that'll help with help them too um because really what it became was i was just overwhelmed with the idea of well I so basically now I have to have like a three hour chunk of time un, un, uninterrupted where I can just sit still and let them settle in my bra I don't have that every day so I don't have that most days so then then it just I was like well okay I guess I can't bond with them today okay I guess I can't bond with them today because the bonding bag was okay but I just felt like I couldn't look at them they couldn't they weren't close to me I Every time I would open the bag, they kept thinking I was going to give them a treat and then, then they'd want to get out. And so then that would, and then I've had a few incidences where they actually got loose in my house because I didn't know how to direct them to stay on me. And they were used to jumping off of me with tent time. And so, the, and then, um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I lived, they lived, it was okay, but it was stressful. And so that's like, well, I don't want to sign up to do that all the time. So I think the biggest thing for me and getting to this level that we're at with bonding is figuring out what routine I could actually do, what they could actually do and a way to do that and then go from there. So now this is what we do. Every day when I get home, I work at my church office. I'm a secretary at my church office. So I get off work around noon. I eat, run, go run an errand or whatever, but I, then I usually come home and then I just take the, the no so pouch out, um, have them go in. They spend an hour, hour and a half in there. Then I take them out, go pick up my kids from school, put them right back in. Um, and then that's, so that's the bulk of our bonding time. 
Um, I try to, when I take them, um, put when I put them in the pouch, I usually don't put the pouch, I don't like have them go straight in, I have them go on me and then in. Um, if I don't have time to do bra time at all for a day, then I try to at least hand, handle them. So I put them out on me, let them walk up and down like you saw her doing before she decided to go in and um, at least interact with them. I did a video on that. There's a couple videos actually on my channel about just handling them. It's not for a long time, um, but the biggest thing is they don't jump off of me. Uh, Balky will jump off of me. I haven't, I've gotten him to not do it for a long time, but he will if I'm close to the cage. So I have to go away from the cage because he wants to jump right back to the cage. Um, if you're moving around, they can't get a target. They feel like they, they, they won't jump until they're confident that they can land safely. So they can't get a target. So you move around and you go away from their cage because he just wants to jump right back. He's totally content once he settles in. But if I had him like on my shoulder, he wouldn't uh, jump to pretty much anything except for his cage. And he would only jump to his cage if I, if I stopped moving. But if I'm like trying to get them settled and I'm standing close to the cage, he would want to jump back to the cage. So there for a little bit in my whole experience with them, I was a little bit sad because I thought, oh, well, I mean, this wasn't really what I had in mind. I kind of envisioned something different for my interactions with them. Um, I still feel like we're con continuing the process of bonding. Um, I have one that on occasion when I go up to the cage and she's not sound asleep, she's maybe, maybe like early morning when she's about to go to sleep but not ready, she comes up to me and she wants to get out and she'll climb on me and she'll want to be with me for a little bit in the morning. Unfortunately, most mornings I don't have time to be with her a lot in the morning because I'm getting my kids ready for school, but still I try to do a little bit of interaction that way. Um, and they're all happy to go down my bra. And then what I'll do sometimes too is I'll take out the bonding bag if I'm like sitting on the couch and I'll open it up and I'll just pet them and interact with them that way. So so they're getting used to my hands and, and they're getting used to me and it's not always in my shirt because I want to be able to pet them, interact. I've also gotten like one out at a time and I'll just be sitting on the couch with them, um, not with my bra bonding bag, but just on the couch with like a blanket and I will have them in my lap like I was kind of hoping to do with the dog. And the only thing is they can't, they don't like the bright light. So the, the, um, the blanket needs to be able to kind of shadow their face a little bit, but then I can pet them and, and interact with them there and they kind of settle in and go to sleep on my lap. I only do that though if I have quite a bit of time to just sit there because I don't want to disturb them after they just finally got settled after, you know, 20 minutes or so. So um, that's kind of what happened in my journey. I, I guess I want to share that because I took care of them during the time that I wasn't sure if I could ever get to a place where I could interact with them like I wanted to, like I can now. Uh, they were well taken care of. We actually continued the trust and bonding. We just kind of um, paused it, you know. They they knew that I was still good. They took treats from me. They were excited to see me because they knew that that meant treats and it meant good things. But we didn't interact. They weren't on me a lot, and that was okay. Um, and then after I realized that I could do the, um, I really got focused on hand taming. It's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm gonna do that. And so then once I started doing that, then I kind of around the same time, well, actually, no, I, the hand taming thing was first and then later came the no sew um, pouch and that really helped a lot. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. I was concerned um, there for a little bit that I had bit off a little bit more than I could chew as far as my expectations not getting met. Um, hey, sorry. I. <laughs> He's like nipping me a little bit on my boob and that doesn't feel very good. <laughs> gremlin, gremlin. <laughs> um, it's because he hasn't gotten settled in the bag. So see, he's when he went in, he went in front and because I'm talking to you, I haven't been able to help him get in the bag. And so now he's like, um, I'm not comfortable. I'm not settled because I'm not in the bag. See the bag, the bag is key, I tell ya. Um, anyway, 
So if you have more questions, I'm sure that that didn't answer all the questions that you guys have had. Um, but I thought that would at least get the conversation started and then we can go from there. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, uh, please, please comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already so that when I do make a video, uh, especially if it's in response to one of your questions, then you'll get the notification right away and you can see it. Please feel free to share if you feel like this would be beneficial to anybody that you know, if you're part of a Facebook group or um, something that have other people that are sugar glider owners or potential sugar glider owners and you want to share it on that group, that would be wonderful as well. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.